Now in this video we'll discuss the fatigue loading and we'll going to discuss the type of loading and the stress ratio endurance strength that is normally used to calculate the life of a part before it fails. Then using the marine equation we'll modify the endurance strength as the endurance strength was theoretically measured by using the RR Murray test but that has to be modified for a standard test specimen so that we'll discuss then we'll discuss the prediction of the failures that is a criteria of failure in the case of fatigue loading and we'll support our theory with the some examples already we are familiar with the static loading in the case of static loading if we plot the load on y axis and the time on x axis then the load is applied gradually and it will reaches the maximum value and the load is remain constant after some time that is called as a static loading but number of situation arises in which the load will continuously vary in magnitude and in direction with respect to time that type of load is called as fatigue loading so we have a load which increases to a maximum value then will attain again a zero value that is a tensile in nature and then again become equal to zero become compressive in nature and then again become equal to zero and this cycle is repeated number of times in this case the load will continuously fluctuate from maximum value of the stress sigma max to the minimum value of the stress that equal to sigma minimum and in this case we have sigma minimum is negative of sigma max this is the one of the way we can show the particular loading now these are the cyclic loads and these loads will continue for any number of cycles what we are interested in that suppose a part is subjected to fatigue loading where the stress will continuously vary either both will be in tension both will be in compression or one in tension and one is compression so that detailed discussion will do later on that loading is called as fatigue loading so the load which changes in magnitude or direction or both that is one time we are tensile second time we are compressive or both are tensile and both are compressive that is he says change in magnitude or direction or both with respect to time is known as dynamic load and the cyclic load and the impact loads are the types of dynamic load in the case of static loading the load is gradually applied and remains stable after reaching its maximum value giving a steady state value of the stress so in this case the value of the stress is remain constant but there are the number of machine members which are subjected to cyclic loading resulting in variable stresses that fluctuate between the different levels say for example consider here a piston and cylinder arrangement so we have a piston here and we have cylinder we have a connecting rod and we have a crank if this is the case of a ic engine then the pressure on the piston will continuously vary and we know the working of the ic engine in this case if we say the torque initially for the suction the torque is negative during the compression is negative during the power stroke it will be positive and exhaust it will be negative so continuously we will find here the torque is going to change with respect to the crank angle theta and therefore the connecting rod here is subjected to tension and compression in every one cycle so this is an example of the stress developed but will be the tensile stress and the compressive stress in the case of ic engine this type of loading that we want to discuss or we can take an example of a suspension of a car so we have a model of a car here and we have suspension that is the spring are used in the front suspension as well as rear suspension and we have a level road as a level road condition will change here the spring will be get compressed and again expand in that case the load is fluctuating the, the forces in the spring will continuously vary that will be tension or compression so this type of fatigue loading problem we want to discuss in the case of fatigue loading now the same question appears in the keyway of a shaft which is connected to the power transmission and the shaft will have variable torque so the keyway has to be designed for fatigue loading so there are number of machine parts which undergo the cyclic loading that is a variable stress another example we can give a shaft and this shaft is transmitting the power and is supported with the help of bearing 
and if the load will act on the shaft then the shaft will bend in the bend position in one cycle the shaft will bend in this fashion and there will be a compression on the top fiber and we have tension on the bottom fiber but as the shaft will turn by another 180 you will get the shaft position will be something like this now this time the fiber which is on the top will be in tension and the fiber which is at the bottom will be in compression so continuously the fiber if you locate at point a that is the top fiber it will undergo compression to tension it means that the stress will vary from negative to zero and then again become positive as far as the fiber at b is considered it is initially tension so from zero stress level it will increase this to maximum value and then it will become the negative value in the case of static loading if we are using a ductile material then according to the stress strain diagram we have a stress strain diagram is initially linear and then we have a straight hardening this value of the stress will be called as ultimate stress the corresponding value which is offset by 2% will be called as SYT. So SYT is a tensile strength, SUT is the ultimate strength and if the part will develop a stress which is lower than the ill stress that is this value of sigma then we have a safe design and if the part will come here then there is a yielding and if it is a yielding we will say the part will fail in the case of ductile material. That is what we have done in the case of static loading whereas in the case of brittle material as such plastic region is not present so we have a stress versus strain diagram in the case of brittle material will be simply ultimate value is same as equal to the SYT value and if the stress is lower than SUT in that case the part will be safe and if it will overcome the value of SUT then the part will fail. So these are the two limits which are used in the ductile and the brittle material but when the part is undergo a cyclic loading, a fluctuating loading, in that case this value of the SUT and SYT are not used. But rather than the new term is used that is the endurance limit SE is used. And this value of endurance strength is lower than SYT as well as lower than SUT maybe approximately equal to 0.5% of SUT. So totally we have a different failure criteria in the case of static loading and in the case of dynamic loading. In the dynamic loading the value of SUT and SYT are not used rather than the value of endurance strength is used for an infinite number of life. So it is already discussed that the failure of a member subjected to static loading when induced stress reaches the ill strength or ultimate tensile strength. In that case we have a failure but it has been observed that machine members subjected to repeated or fluctuating stresses often fail at a maximum value of the induced stress well below the value of SYT or SUT of the material and such failure is known as the fatigue failure as it occurs after a large number of stress cycles. Now here the fatigue means the progressive damage or a fracture of a material caused by repeated cycles of a stress strain. Say for example we have a wire and we want to break the wire. So to break the wire what we will do here, we will apply the force on this side and one force we apply this side. That is we will do the wire should be shaped first like this then shaped like this and repeatedly we will do this job by applying the forces at the end. After some time we will find that the fracture will develop at the center and the wire will break. That is the fatigue means the progressive damage of a fracture of a material caused by repeated cycle of stress and strain. When the stress out a notch crack or other location of a stress concentration exceeds the ill strength Plastic deformation happens and this plastic deformation together with the fluctuating stress is enough for a part to develop the microstructure flaws eventually lead to failure as opposed to the failure approach. So there is a mechanism in the development of the fatigue loading. So initially a small crack is developed and you continue the fluctuating stresses then the crack will open and it will 
further expand and that is the reason that the material will fail that is a case of progressive damage in the fatigue loading only the value of the maximum stress and the minimum stress are important in designing but there are the various types of cyclic loading so a number of different regular and the irregular patterns are followed by cyclic stresses in the machinery but generally it follows a sinusoidal pattern of a nature of a some rotating machinery so in the first case we have the initial stress is zero then the stress will become maximum again we will reach to zero and in second half the stress will become negative it will attain a maximum negative value and finally will again reach to zero value and in this case the minimum stress will be the negative value of the maximum stress that is the magnitude wise the sigma max and sigma minimum they are one and same thing this type of stress is called as the completely reverse stress based on the maximum stress and minimum stress we will define here one stress which one is called as the mean stress and the mean stress is defined as sigma mean is equal to sigma maximum plus sigma minimum divided by 2 now since here the value of sigma minimum is same as negative value of sigma max so we have sigma maximum plus we have negative value of sigma max so numerator will become 0 so we have 0 divided by 2 is equal to 0 so in this case we have value of sigma mean value will be equal to 0 from mean value how much your stress fluctuate that will be called as stress amplitude so this magnitude here is called as stress magnitude is called as amplitude so this one is representing the amplitude of the stress that is equal to sigma a it is also called as a variable stress and it is represented by sigma sub a and it is the absolute value of maximum stress minus minimum stress and divided by 2 in the present case we have sigma minimum value is same as equal to negative of sigma max so for completely reverse we have sigma a is equal to 2 times of sigma max divided by 2 that itself is equal to sigma max the second type of a variation is called as a repeated stress in the case of repeated stress minimum value of the stress is zero then the stress will increase and then will become maximum value and again the stress will attain a value equal to zero and this waveform will continue so maximum stress produced in this case is measured from the zero line will be equal to sigma max so if we calculate here the value of sigma mean that equal to sigma max plus 0 divided by 2 so exactly half of this will be representing here the value of sigma mean and corresponding value will be equal to sigma amplitude as well as this value is also equal to sigma amplitude so in this case the stress varies from 0 to certain maximum value and in this case the nature of the stress will not change that is called as a repeated stress and the third type we have a fluctuating stress in which the minimum value and the maximum value of a stress is of a same nature either it is tensile or either it is compressive so we will get a waveform of a stress it will first become maximum value then become certain value and then it become the minimum value but this time both the value will be positive that is we have value of sigma max is a tensile and the sigma minimum is also tensile it will attain the mean value and the cycle will continue so this value corresponds to the mean value and if you measured from the mean to max it will be called as the sigma amplitude sigma a and this value is also called as sigma a so these are the three possible type of the stresses that will occur is a completely reverse stress or we have repeated stress or we have fluctuating stress only two static components here are used one is called as the mean stress and other is called as the amplitude stress which one is also called as the variable component so in the case of the repeated or reverse stress or repeated stress and the fluctuating stress 
the stress variation is characterized by the four key term one is sigma maximum second is sigma minimum third is mean stress and the fourth one is amplitude that is represented by sigma a in the repeated and the reverse stress from the figure we'll find here the value of sigma amplitude is same as equal to sigma maximum so in this case we have sigma amplitude is same as equal to sigma maximum and the value of the mean stress that is sigma m is equal to zero whereas in the case of repeated stress we have to calculate the value of sigma mean value and in this case we have sigma mean will be equal to the sum of maximum stress plus the minimum stress and is divided by 2 but the mean stress is equal to 0 so in this case we have sigma mean value is same as equal to sigma max divided by 2 so this value of sigma mean is equal to sigma max divided by 2 and from sigma mean we can measure the value of sigma amplitude so if you want to find out the value of sigma amplitude from the graph then this value will be same as equal to the maximum stress minus the mean value sigma max and the mean stress will be equal to sigma maximum divided by 2 so amplitude in the repeated stress will be equal to sigma maximum divided by 2 in the case of fluctuating stress we have to measure the value of sigma max from 0 so we have to calculate the value of sigma mean by the standard formula that is known to us is sigma maximum plus sigma minimum divided by 2 and the amplitude again we can calculate using a standard relation so sigma amplitude is given as the absolute value of sigma maximum minus sigma minimum and is divided by 2 two terms will introduce here one is the amplitude ratio which is normally represented by letter a and it's a ratio of the stress amplitude divided by the mean stress and the secondly we'll define here the stress ratio r is given as a ratio of a minimum stress to maximum stress so in the case of completely reverse stress we can able to calculate the stress ratio which is sigma a by sigma m we have value of sigma a is same as equal to sigma max and sigma mean is equal to zero so we have amplitude ratio is equal to infinity and we have stress ratio is equal to sigma mean by sigma max sigma mean is same as equal to negative value of sigma max divided by sigma max that equal to minus one when we have amplitude ratio equal to infinity r is equal to minus one is supposed to be the worst condition of loading so out of the three conditions we have given here that is completely reverse repeated stress and fluctuating so worst condition you will get when the stress will change from tension to compression in the case of repeated stress we have amplitude is given as sigma a which is equal to sigma max by 2 and sigma mean is also sigma max by 2 so both numerator and denominator are equal to sigma max by 2 and sigma max by 2 therefore we have amplitude ratio will be equal to 1 and we have stress ratio is defined as minimum value of the stress which is equal to 0 and the maximum stress so stress ratio in the case of repeated stress will be equal to 0 for fluctuating stress depending upon the value of sigma i and sigma m you have to calculate the amplitude ratio but here minimum value and the maximum value both are positive so this time this ratio is equal to greater than zero that is a positive value so we'll practice here few questions which is based on the completely reverse stress repeated stress fluctuating stress and we need to calculate either sigma mean sigma amplitude or the amplitude ratio and the stress ratio which of the following loading condition is the worst for machine components subjected to the same maximum loading completely reverse loading is the worst condition because for this one we have stress ratio r is equal to minus one and the amplitude ratio will be equal to infinity 
A static load is mounted at the center of the shaft, rotating at a uniform angular velocity. This shaft will be designed for the maximum compressive stress, the maximum bending moment, the maximum tensile stress or fatigue loading. It will be designed for fatigue loading. That is the choice D is correct choice. In a structure subjected to fatigue loading, the minimum and the maximum stresses developed in a cycle are 200 megapascal and 400 megapascal. Both are positive value. The value of the stress amplitude in megapascal we have to find out. When both the value are positive, it will representing the fluctuating stress and we have given the maximum value of the stress is equal to 400 and the minimum value is given as equal to 200. Both values are given us in megapascal and we want to calculate the stress amplitude. So stress amplitude we can calculate using a standard formula that is the absolute value of sigma maximum minus sigma minimum divided by 2. So we have absolute value of 400 minus 200 divided by 2. That is we have 200 divided by 2 is equal to 100 is megapascal. For the given fluctuating load which varies from 250 to 50, we are interested to know the stress amplitude that is this value of stress amplitude we are interested and secondly we are interested in the stress ratio. So this value of 250 megapascal is sigma max and sigma minimum will be equal to 50 megapascal. You have to calculate the stress amplitude. Stress amplitude is simply given as the absolute value of sigma maximum minus sigma minimum divided by 2. You have to always use the absolute sign because it is possible that both the stresses are negative that is a compressive but the value of amplitude is always positive. So we have sigma amplitude equal to sigma maximum which is equal to 250 minus sigma minimum is also positive value is 50 divided by 2. So 250 minus 50 is 200 divided by 2 is equal to 100 and we have amplitude is equal to 100 megapascal. Secondly we want to calculate the stress ratio R and the stress ratio is simply given as minimum value of the stress divided by maximum value of the stress. We have minimum value of the stress is equal to 50 and we have maximum value of the stress is equal to 250. So 50 divided by 250 is 1 by 5 that equal to 0 0.2. So 100 megapascal and 0 0.2, 100 megapascal and 0 0.2 choice C is correct choice. In a structure subjected to fatigue loading, the minimum and the maximum stress develop are 200 and 400. The value of the stress amplitude we have to calculate. Again, a very straightforward questions are asked in gate examination on the variation of a stress. Both stresses here 400 and 200 are positive values. So in the case of fluctuating stress and we have given the value of maximum stress is equal to 400 whereas the minimum stress is given as equal to 200 and we are interested in the stress amplitude. Stress amplitude is given by absolute value of maximum stress minus minimum stress and whole thing is divided by 2. So we have absolute value of 400 minus 200 that is we have 200 divided by 2 is equal to 100 megapascal. Already we have solved similar type of question. And one question is asked in 2019 during a high cycle fatigue test, metallic specimen is subjected to cyclic loading with a mean stress of 140 and the minimum stress of minus 70. And the R ratio we have to calculate. That is the value of sigma minimum by sigma maximum we have to calculate. Since we have given here the mean stress is equal to 140 megapascal and the minimum stress is equal to minus 70 megapascal and we want to calculate here the stress ratio r which is nothing but sigma minimum divided by sigma maximum so somehow you have to calculate the value of sigma max that can be calculated from the value of sigma mean 
which is nothing but sigma max plus sigma mean divided by 2. So we can calculate for sigma max is equal to 2 times of sigma mean value that is equal to 140 minus sigma minimum value. So that is equal to 280 minus and minus 70. So we will get the maximum stress is equal to 350 megapascal. Therefore the stress ratio is given as sigma minimum A is minus 70 and sigma maximum equal to 350 that is negative 1 by 5 is minus 0.2. The video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on Google store and in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate. Join the course directly from your mobile. The link is given here.